I'm very curious about this game. I don't know anything about it other than the general concept, which is it's a conversation between two people on a cliff. So let's check it out. What happened? There we go. <laughs> Way to start out strong. Hello? Honkhorn or hello? Oh, this is gonna be a choice game, okay. Well, at least it's pretty relaxing so far. Sorry, birds. Right. Just breathe. Deep breaths. In. Out. I mean, what else are you supposed to do if you're teetering on the edge of a cliff? No sudden movements. Everything will be all right. Whoa, hello. Riku just jumped up on the desk. Is this a new thing now? I'm trying to play a game here. Okay. It's just a cliff. She's over here now. It's probably not even that steep anyway. Or deadly. Definitely not deadly. She wants my love and attention. Yeah, I don't know about that. Undeadly. A lively. All right, zombie. Sorry, there's puns in this game. It'll be just like the log flu. As my cat nudges the microphone. Hello. People queue for these kinds of thrills. Unfollowed. I mean, what would you do, honestly, if you were stuck in a car on the edge of a cliff? Like... God, that's... I mean, I would definitely be... Talking out loud to myself. I, yeah, I don't know if I'd be panicking or cracking jokes. Alright, kitty. You, you're in the way. <laughs> anyway. I should be more appreciative of my fortunes. I like that it's like a... A decision thing. Just like any other day for me. Wow. And I didn't even queue. Gotta have a sense of humor, right? Next stop, fun. Uh, okay. All I've got to do is not panic, and everything will be alright. Just don't panic. Panic-free zone over here. Easy as that. Don't panic. Yeah, no, that's not gonna work. Totally panicking. Oh, God. This is bad, isn't it? Yeah, you know, why is it rocking? Like, actually bad? I don't like how much it's leaning forward. Terrible, even. I'm gonna die before I even moved out. Before I opened the dog cafe! <laughs> oh my god. Look at these- oh, zombie, here you go, just for you. Look at these puns. Our choices are, you will live on in spirit, coffee pup. I'm sorry I never made you, Wolfle House. And the world wasn't ready, Beagle Bagels. I like Wolfle House, too. Hi. Not the bagels. What's up, Spooky? How you doing tonight? What legacy am I leaving behind? Or, uh, well, mourning over lost life isn't helping anything. I don't know, Beagle Bagels was pretty good, too. Might as well enjoy my last moments. I get the feeling this game is going to be... very funny, as it has been so far, but 
I have a feeling it's... I, I'm just getting a feeling it's gonna be one of those games that's just gonna, like, wreck us. It's just me and you. Name the car? Hell yeah. Looks like a Carlos to me. Lara? Mala? They're all good choices. I'm gonna go with Carlos. I like that name. To the bitter end, Carlos, you rusty death machine. That's what I called my old car. I had a little hatchback. Not much bigger than this. Or the salty end. And Carlos is a pun! See? I knew there was a reason it spoke to me. That's a good name. It's not that bad. Oh, we got a squirrel over here. Every day I'll wake up. Crack my back. True. Look at the sunrise. Think about life. The squirrel's gonna jump on the car and cause chaos. I hope so. I'll just live with the plants and animals now. Nah, I've got like most of a toothpaste tube. I wonder if the narrative that you weave throughout this affects how it ends at all. Like, do the decisions matter? I'll become a poet. Scratch my heart and soul into the windows and doors. And cast myself to sea like a message in a bottle. Spend the rest of my days with my fellow seaweed. It's interesting that there's so many pauses. And then I'll die. Death and buried at the bottom of the sea. I'm sorry, dead and buried. With nothing but a failed life and a wet car to leave behind. Great. All right, girl, it's time to take action. <laughs> maybe they're trying to make you think about the choices. I mean, maybe. I feel like the, the pauses are giving you kind of like a... It's kind of making you feel, I think, like you're in the situation. Because, like, you would totally do that. You wouldn't just ramble. Like, you'd hit points where you're just kind of sitting there, right? I rule my own destiny. I am my future queen. There's the motivation we need. Try radio. It's a scuffed radio. Well, that didn't work. Oh man, that car is really teetering. Well, smoke coming out might help. Somebody might see it. Damn it. I thought you were done breaking down, Carlos. I can't afford to wait all night this time. I want to know how they wound up here. These long pauses, man. Great. I was just thinking we needed a windstorm. 
Wind, be kind. Oh my god. Well, the camera's moving now? I said kind. Kind! We're literally looking at a single image and I feel so stressed. Uh oh. No, no, no. Crap! Oh god! What about putting the seats back to put more weight towards the back of the car? That's an idea. Crap! I'm guessing there's a reason that they can't. Maybe there's stuff in the back seat? Like, what if they have luggage back there and it's the only thing, like, weighing them down enough so they don't fall? I don't know. I'm just... thinking, holy god. Probably overthinking. I thought that was it. The end. Goodbye everything. The car is supposedly dead too, so not battery powered. Carlos served us well, I guess. Like, is that it? An engine failure. A passing breeze. That's it? Everything just done. See you later. I don't know, maybe this is fine? Maybe this is just how it ends. It's gonna end at some point, right? I'm just skipping the boring bit. Probably. I don't know, I wouldn't say it's the boring bit. Skipping all the good bits. This game's gonna like make us really think about our mortality. I could I can just tell. I don't know if I'm ready for that today. <laughs> Whoa. Sweet Jesus, look at the size of that thing. Antlered champion of the woods! Some of these choices. It could throw me off this cliff in a heartbeat. Pray don't ram me, antlered footboy. <laughs> I'm not but a lonely soul. Ahem. Can you hear me? I'll take that as a no. Unless he's ignoring me. So far I really like our unseen character. He's biding his time before he antlers me into oblivion. Serves me right for intruding, I guess. Moved. This is gonna be our new friend. I like how the sun is still slowly going down, you can actually see it moving. What are you looking at, dear? He's looking at something. Fetch help, friend. Get a net or something. Or a robot arm. <laughs> oh, man. The deer's gotten a taste for meat. Oh, Good lord. It's gonna be like the, uh, 
What was it? The sheep in Kino's journey? Or a family of eagles. Or just stand there. Looking at nothing. That's helpful too. He's looking at something. I don't think he's looking at nothing. I made this side laugh out loud. Well, he did say this was a comedy show. Mission accomplished. Uh oh. Ag, <laughs> sorry, I was kidding. Oh no. What do you want? Hey, be careful. Can I help you? Perhaps. Oh shit, he's talking to us. His dialogue was at the bottom. Whoa. Are we hallucinating? Are you actually happening? There are none happy there are none happiest in the world. Wow. But those who enjoy freely a vast horizon. There is no way you are for real. Right. So you can hear me? I wonder if we're getting delirious or if this is actually happening. I can. Holy God! <laughs> well, my mind melted sooner than expected. Get help, dear. Yeah, why are you standing around talking to me? It's lovely to meet you, Stag. The feeling reciprocates. We've met on a significant day, woodland boy. Significant how? I'm glad you asked. Today I have decided to go insane. Is that so? It is so. And how did you decide? It's simple, really. First, I drove off a cliff. Secondly, secondly, I talked to a deer. Thirdly, thusly, yet to be written. <laughs> Uncharted. Uncharted. I like how frank the deer is. The vast unknown in which I befriend an elk. And then die. Not an elk. Sorry. Er, what were you saying about horizons? There are none happiest in this world. But those who enjoy freely a vast horizon. Um, what? Is something wrong? I'm not sure I can feel free or happy right now. Your soul is free to follow the flow of the ocean's tide. Free? My car is balancing on a cliff face! <laughs> and your soul is not attached to it. It feels pretty stuck in there. And pretty soon it's gonna feel stuck in the ocean. Package fell into ocean. Man, what the hell? Soul, ocean, splash, not free, dead. You seem to still be clutching on to me. This isn't about life, it's about death. Does it have to be? I'm not sure it's optional. I trust we will find out. You're a real beacon of hope, you are. Is there reason not to be? Hope's gone. Way gone. It will be a far more desperate time when hope is lost. More desperate than this? Yes. Well, I've lost the plot instead then. 
perhaps. But from my perspective, it does not look completely hopeless. From my perspective, I can only see into the eye of death. Worrying will not help you here. But what will? First, take a moment. Close your eyes. Inhale deeply. This kind of reminds me of the thing with the feather in Celeste. Count backwards from five. At zero, exhale. Is he teaching us how to deal with a panic attack or something? Okay, that did help. Wonderful. You can gain clarity and perspective when you slow your thoughts. To a glacial pace. Now. What are you going to do? Somehow drive back to safety? Have you tried? No, I'll do it now. Try reversing. Why not? Okay, bad idea. That did not sound quite like the correct noise. It was absolutely the incorrect noise. What is the problem? The engine is dead. So you are trapped in that contraption? Um, this contraption has a name. It's Carlos. Apologies, we were not introduced. Perhaps coasting so close to the coast isn't so wise with a problematic engine such as yours. Perhaps, yes. Thanks for the advice. You love this stag? It is the least I can do. You could get me a latte. Aside from that. A back rub? Not quite so pleasant as you'd envision. <laughs> I do not have the tools required. Tools? Cloven hooves. Come on, they'd be perfect! Whatever the aptitude, no back rubbing. Fine. Under different circumstances. Maybe. Hope so. So what do I do? Wait for the cliff to crumble. Could! Or wait for the engine to cool down. And that might take how long? Probs all night. Let us hope you make the whole night. Comforting! Perhaps you should explore other avenues of escape. Like what? Have you considered... Getting out? Well, no. A viable option.
too afraid to. Ah! Okay, yeah. Nope. That car started rocking. Nope! <laughs> Absolutely not. Looks like we're here for the long run. Poor Carlos. Oh man, are they gonna show us how far down it is? Like this. Fun fact about me, I hate being high up. I can't stand heights. This is like a literal nightmare to me. So you're out here all by yourself? All alone? I am solitary in form. No little antlered friends? No. You'd be dead by now from panicking. I would probably have passed out and made the car teeter over the edge, yeah. Like, just you? Just I. Nobody else. Nobody else. Why? Why not? Well... Do you not get lonely out here by yourself? Is that not a question you should be asking yourself? You too sought solitude in these cliffs. Not forever, though. Then for how long? Just as long as it took. Before what? I don't know. I'll tell you later, maybe. And anyway, I totally asked you. If I am lonely? Ah, I am no more lonely than a single dandelion standing in a field then a drop of rain falling from a cloud, then this world. A bead of blue melting in time. All those things sound desperately lonely. The dandelion in the field does not feel lonely, for it is part of the field. You almost thought the deer was alluding to there only being one person in the car when he was talking about solitude. I think... Wait, you almost thought the deer was alluding to there only being one person in the car when he was talking about solitude. What do you mean? Am I... Explain it to me like I'm five. I'm not sure I follow. But it's all alone. Alone and lonely are quite different. Okay, that's true. You two came here to find solitude. Oh, oh, okay, I see, I see. Um, that is very true. Sometimes you're lonely. But you're not always lonely when you're alone. Like, I personally very much enjoy alone time. It's not always lonely. I seek this solitude like the sun seeks the horizon. My infatuation with the forms of the world compels me to it. I guess I came out here for a piece of that, too. I thought there was only one person. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there is. Whatever that is. I may have an idea what that is. 
I'm listening. Watching draft with Rumi. Good to see you, Bronco. Thank you for the lurk. Appreciate it, friend. Enjoy the draft. You know, when the game description said that this was about a conversation between two people, I didn't realize it was an animal and then us. On endless days, I find myself beside the sea. While ocean tides lays across the shore. The waves take hold of my soul. And the world drifts away to a daze. We did say we were going to become a poet. In these quiet moments is not the sea a part of me and my soul as I have it? What is he on about? Our souls are as one. I have never been less alone. That really, that makes me think of a lyric from a Third Eye Blind song. There's a line where he says, uh, I've never been so alone, and I've never been so alive. That's what that made me think of. Same vibe. music and the sound of the waves makes it so easy to forget that I'm on the side of a cliff. I keep being like, this is nice. Oh, wait. Yeah. A piece of that. But in doses, right? How do you mean? Constantly being alone can't be the answer. Doesn't there need to be some interaction? Interaction? Yeah, you know, connection with people. As much as you can feel as one with the sunshine, You've got to be able to wallow in the rain with someone, right? Or on the side of a cliff. If you constantly surround yourself with others, your thoughts will become nothing but theirs. And you will never truly know the voice of your own heart. Constantly, sure. But don't you need to hear the voice of other people's hearts, too? The heart will yearn for kindred souls to share in worldly things. At this time, for my heart, the kindred souls are found in the trunks of trees. <laughs> in the white clouds. In the evening rain. So he's one with nature kind of thing? But not all souls are tinged with the same hue. Maybe my soul is more balance-oriented. Balance is important. I do see what you're saying. Out here you can feel connected to everything. And feel like you belong in the world. I think that's what I want. I'll try. What did bring you here? Will you tell me now? 
I guess it is later now. All right then. Yeah, I want to know too. So, background check. Yes? I was studying. The study of what? Mm, film. I wanted to direct. And there your heart lies? I thought so. Well, I've just always loved the idea of it. Being an eyeball. A prism. It's so dreamy, capturing that little fragment of time. But like, just how I see it. However obscured or bizarre that is. It's a totally skewed way of showing your perspective of the world. The ambition to capture the moment. Yeah, ha. Huh. So when I was a youngster, we would make these home videos. That's accurate. <laughs> there is one of those videos where I slammed my head on a pole, preserved on a different YouTube channel forever. I'm feeling like this protagonist is relatable. Me, my brother, and my dad. We had this weird towel room upstairs in our house. Don't ask why we had a room just for towels. Anyway, right at the back there was this heating box thing with two beady little red lights on it. There they were, or I'm sorry, they were, without question, demon eyes. It used to freak me and my brother out until my dad gave us this giant video camera. So at night we would creep upstairs, videoing our escapade. My dad would pretend we were those muscle-bound demon hunters and he was our number one fan. We made these totally amazing films, so over the top and dumb, of just us ascending the stairs. Up to the demon lair. When we'd get to the top, my dad would run in before us, screaming. And the towel demon would claim his life. Me and my brother would be all dramatic and charge in to avenge his death with an onslaught of hand towels. We'd all sit around and try to cut together this grand grandiose movie of our brave attack. It was the greatest. Basically since then, those memories have stayed with me and I've loved making videos. And so your heart is bound to capturing the moments of life. I don't know. I thought so. Not anymore. Well, I was studying filmmaking. Prior to now? Yes, prior to now. Until... I checked the heck out. Hello, meaningless loans. <laughs> what led you to leave? I don't know. I just didn't feel like I could do it. Like, I'd waited for such a long time. And when it came, it was so overwhelming. It wasn't what I'd imagined. And I didn't feel like I could do it anymore. Maybe I'm not creative enough. What if you never went? What difference would it make? What else am I going to do? You would figure it out. How? Whatever you are meant to do would make itself clear. Fall off this cliff? Perhaps that is it. Why not make this meaningful? I can't just decide to give things meaning. Surely that is all you can do. Then everything is meaningless. It only means nothing if you deem it so. So it all meant me dying in a car? It all meant something. But for now, perhaps it means watching the sunset on the edge of a cliff.
Why did you come here? To see the waves and hope my life becomes clear. I thought if I'd looked out, I'd feel like everything matters. And does it? I don't know. It does not always work that way. I find some of the most important realizations come not in the moment, but after. In normality. When your mind wanders back to this place, then perhaps you will find clarity in clouded times. Well, if the engine eventually works, maybe I'll find out. Precisely. Life is not over. I suppose. We still have each other, right? That is enough. That is enough, as in shut up, or that is enough, as in we complete each other. That is enough. You're difficult. But I like you. And I, you. You're sweet. Where were we? Life. Life. Are you ready to bear witness to life's conclusion? Who is to say it concludes? You mean... the afterlife? A new beginning, perhaps. It's the beginning of being dead. Which isn't much of a start. It could be. This stag. Who's to say? Who indeed? You? Are you like the angel of death or something? What do you think? I don't know what to think anymore. You're baffling, dear, or you definitely are. You definitely are. If it helps, it does. I don't know, do we really think he's the angel of death? Why did you choose this place? You really think this is all in their head? Like, uh, the deer's just standing there and they're just imagining this conversation? Hidden away, lost in space. We used to come out here when I was a kid. I used to love it out here. I would count how many faces I could see in the rocks. So many wrinkly old raisin heads. Apparently, I used to call them my rock granddads. I thought I'd come back and see if the old rock dads had any advice for me. Do they? I haven't had a chance to ask them yet. Perhaps your chance will come. Right now, all I can see is sea and sky. This is a metaphorical place about something they're struggling with? Oh... That's an interesting take. Oh, hey, look at that squirrel. Yeah, what happened to the squirrel? Now he's down here on the ground. Good evening, friend. Such a cutie. I wish I was that squirrel right now. I'm sure she has her own trials to attend to. But they're squirrely. I'm going to call her. Debbie, Meg, or Sharon. <laughs> Debbie. What if she already has a name? Until I find out, Debbie will have to do. It's perfect. Young Debbie. So small. So carefree. The world is just a playground built just for you. You know not of hardship and angst. You simply be. Oh, Debs has come over to say hello. Hi, Debbie. Not a talker, eh? Uh oh. Do you know 
Nahi? What's up, Manta? How you doing tonight? Happy Thursday. Oh, Debbie. So zealous. So full of life. Is the squirrel trying to weigh the car down? Have you come to whisper a secret? Is your voice too tiny for ears? Oh. Um, watch your step there, Deborah. I'm not exactly glued on here. We could pick this up later, if you like. Sorry if you're not into Debbie. <laughs> Is Deborah better? Or Diane? Or Lethal Diane? Yeah, we've been teetering on this cliff since the game started. I'll just stop talking. You called it about the squirrel? What about it, that it was going to get on the car? Diane, be careful. It's a long drop. I like how she's calling it Diane now instead of Debbie. Ugh. Oh god. Oh my god. Yes, we are casually talking to a deer while we're dangling from a cliff, and they already showed us how far down it is. It's a really long drop. And I was saying, I am very much afraid of heights, so this is a like a literal nightmare situation to me. I hate squirrels. Hey, uh, is it dark or is the shadow of death finally upon me? Death's silhouette stretches to this edge to consume us. Oh, why must you puncture my soul, cr cr cruel twisted claw of mortality? Not but meager puppets are we in this cowled scoundrel's insidious waltz. Hopeless fools, pray the end spare me this pitiful dance. It is simply dark. I was getting into that. Like how this tag is like, it's just dark out. Oh man, look at the stars. Can't they get out by the door? We tried that and the car started to fall off the cliff. We also tried to reverse it, but the engine's dead. I don't even remember the last time I saw this many. That's something I really do need to do is Go out and, like, get away from all the light pollution of the cities. I want to see, like, the actual night sky somewhere. You never see the stars? Where I live, you're lucky if you see the moon. True. That must be isolating. They mean something when I do see them, at least. In days of absence, I will long for a night sky. Don't you ever find it a bit... overwhelming? Overwhelming? Just... looking up. All the everythings. Why is the deer talking? We don't know. We, we don't actually know. He, uh, he walked up to us and just started talking to us. I feel the weight of it all, hanging there. Ah, but the stars are here with us, you see? They share the night with us. But why bother? Why should it mean anything? They're too far away to matter. Distance is nothing. They are as much with us as I with you. Think, does anything offer this same tranquility? Nothing lulls the soul lost in reverie as the stars.
Shards of glitter and glass suspended over us. Yeah, this deer is, um... I want to say wise? <laughs> I don't know, though. Yeah, they're beautiful. Just isolating. Try this. Focus your gaze on a single star. Okay, got one. Consider the journey that lone flicker of light has roamed. A strand of silver weaves its way across a galaxy, streaming through celestial clouds, across the backs of shimmering worlds, a lone light, finally finds itself here. Lucky star. I just can't fathom things too infinite. That deer is death. We actually did ask it that. We we earlier we asked it, are you the angel of death? And he was like, do you want me to be? And then we were like, you totally are. And he's like, if that helps. Like, he didn't confirm or deny. He's just like, if that's what you want to think of me, that's fine. So we don't know his deal yet, but that did come up. It's painful. The beauty of the night is its ability to levitate you. Weightless. One moment and swallow you the next. Oddly enough, it is actually nice being out here. Quite the night. Sure is. Wait, where's the moon at? Behind you. Just out of sight. Ain't that just the way? That's like, that's what I would say. It'd be like fucking figures, you know? Of course it is. On countless evenings past, I have found myself here. Gazing up at the moon. Lost, weightless, suspended in time. All the while... The stag in the moon gazes back. The stag in the moon? The stag in the moon. You do not know it? I think you mean the man in the moon. The man in the moon? I suppose we all see a reflection of ourselves in the face of the moon. But it's the Sandman! The Sandman? Yeah! If you're bad, he steals your eyes when you're asleep. He steals eyes? Yep, to feed to his bird children on the moon. This tag's like, what the fuck? And you prefer that? I'm not saying I prefer it, I'm just telling it like it is. Stories are stories. We may believe whatever we choose is right for us. Perhaps we can exclude that. <laughs> stories are stories. And the moon is a mystery. I love that. Maybe we'll just leave that part out. Like, I don't know what you're talking about, dude. A gray enigma with a face. I wonder what the moon thinks of us. From up there, we must seem a mesmerizing unknown just the same. It probably thinks we're idiots. It's probably not wrong. We used to come out here and make up constellations when we were younger. 
Constellations? Yeah, you know, stories in the stars. Stories in the stars. Say what? Okay, so there's a ton of real constellations. Dreamed up by a bunch of skeletons. But they're boring. I see. There's stories told in pictures dotted in the stars. Ah, tales of adventures and philosophers mapped out in the sky? Exactly! Let's see if I can remember any of ours. Obviously, there's Avery, the Queen of Steel. Quite the title. She was quite the woman. I was wondering if they were going to show it in this guy. She was bigger than a boulder with a gaze of pure steel. Was she heavier than feathers? With her steely vision, she could transform anything she wished into pure glistening steel. Impressive. Yep. However, all was not well. It was not. Despite how tirelessly the people worshipped her. For her steel. She greatly disliked them all. Why? They just didn't vibe with her. I can understand that. So, in an effort to hide away from her raging fandom, she turned an entire forest to steel and took refuge within. Also a leopard. Called Neptune. After many blissful months of peace, despite the steeliness of her forest fortress, her followers found her and began throwing themselves once more at her steel-clad feet. Praise the Steel Queen, they would chant. One night when the stars were glistening brightly across Neptune's back, the Steel Queen decided to end the parade. She commanded the brightest stars in the sky to turn into steel, forming a perfect image of herself in the heavens. Seeing how much larger this new Steel Queen was, her enthusiastic cult mostly left her alone. The end. I shall never look at those stars the same way. Tell me, what others do you know? Well, there's the worm? Are we just making this shit up? The worm? Yeah, um, immortalized in the stars because it was the... Er, the first worm. The first worm. Yeah, first worm. Worm zero. From where did this first worm descend? Or ascend? It fell out of someone's ear. An earworm. Exactly. <laughs> An earworm. It was an Alaskan bullworm. Even better. And so it traveled across the globe, singing its worm lullaby into the soil, and planting new worms in every continent. What became of the first worm? No one knows. Some say, when the moon is waning as thin as a worm, if you press your ears to the soil, you can hear the lullaby of the first worm. Softly humming through the ground, at the next warm moon, I shall listen. As shall I. What other legends linger in the stars? Good question. Um, I'm out of ideas. I see something. What is it? Enid. 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 Just Enid? Should it be Enid the something? 
Pretty much. Enid the introspective. Of course. She was a great philosopher. Double, of course. She was an expert in silence. Like a mime? She never spoke a single word. A committed mime, then. It was by choice, her eternal silence. The deer don't go back to his dear friends and tell them the stories. They're going to laugh and make fun of them. He said he's, uh, he doesn't, like, interact with anybody. Um, he said he likes to be alone. So I don't think he has any dear friends. But she could talk. She could. How could anyone tell? It was obvious. Was it? In place of words, she chose thought. She considered concepts so grand. She fathomed abstractions so unfathomable. Ideas so spectacular and utterly groundbreaking. Is he making this up too? That one day she literally broke the ground and was swallowed by the resulting crevice, crevasse. Dude. It is customary to stay silent when observing the Enid formation. Out of respect and admiration. Well, at least our headlights still work. I just noticed they're turned on. My bad. Sorry, Enid. Is it true your antlers fall off every year? Oh no, what is... Ah! <laughs> what is this now? What is it? That... thing! It is harmless. Are you kidding me? Do you know what that is? Yes. Badger! That much I can see. They're vicious beasts! This little one does not look so vicious. Oh, if only you knew. It wants blood. It looks more cuddly than anything. Cuddly? If you cuddled that, you'd lose an antler. Have you tried? Have you? No. Well then. Right, let me tell you a story. All right. So when I was a kid, I had this fluffy toy penguin called Ernest. Ernest? After Hemingway. I had a Hemingway phase. Anyway, me and Ernest were like best buds. Unconventional pod-dwelling peas. So this one night, I'm losing my mind because I can't find him. My mom tells me we'll find him in the morning. I flipped. What's going on in the sky? So the next day, we're in the garden and I see a wisp of white blow by. Delicately dancing in the wind. Also, I don't know why I just pieced together that I think our character is British. Between Mum and Lost the Pot. It was pleasant, dreamy almost. It isn't long before I locate the source. In the bushes at the bottom of the garden. There lies sweet Ernest Hemingway. Disemboweled. It was quite the scene. I love how... There's so much emphasis on certain things. 
So my dad goes looking for evidence, trying to avenge my woe. There, behind the hedges, he unveils this. Demonic. Frothing. Badger. Nestled in Hemingway's remains. Nestled. <laughs> badger, badger, mushroom. Oh my god, yeah, I was thinking of that earlier when they first said badger, and I was like, you know what? I don't think anybody's going to get that reference, so I just said nothing. But I'm, I appreciate that you said that, Monza. I'm glad that that is not forgotten. That is an old, old fucking video. I learned a lot that day. About letting go? About the bloodthirst of badgers. They're demons. You ought not let the actions of one affect your opinion of the whole. Maybe you're right. That one was pretty harrowing, though. This one is not. What's it doing? Very little. Wandering. Wandering. Plotting. There is little in the way of plotting to note. It's planning something. Trust me. Here it comes. To disembowel you, I should think. Don't say that! Goodbye, friend. It was a pleasure. Stop! Your adversary has departed. You will not be missed, devil creature. <laughs> Go now. Prey on another helpless foe. Achievement unlocked black and white death machine. There's an achievement for insisting the badgers are dangerous. I don't know anymore, dear. Do you? Do I what? Do you know? Do I know what? I don't know. Then neither do I. I'm trying to stay positive. I really am. But I can't help feeling like the universe doesn't want me here. If it did not, do you think you would be? Maybe it's nothing to do with anything. Maybe it's all random and nothing cares. I don't even know if that's worse. I guess at least then it's not intentional punishment. It's just bad luck. Hmm. What is it? Wait. Probably not gonna help. You have got to be kidding me. All right, everything I said before about things being bad, they were fine. Now they're bad. The beauty was just getting started. What? What is more beautiful than this? Literally anything else. But is anything more mesmerizing than the transformation brought by the rain? Puppies! Anything! Life would be nothing without beauty. Well, we're not going to be alive to see it.
You worry about death while life ignites around you. That's actually a really good point. This is the fire of beauty that rages from the earth. Serenity lay in wait to be ripped apart for the wildest form. Torrents of exhilaration pour from the sky. Quakes shake the ocean to cry out. Blistering crescendo from every form of life. All are thrust from rest to revel in violent beauty. Nothing sleeps while nature takes its fiercest dance. Shitting your pants. Uh, yeah, I would have passed out from panic well before this point, I think. You know, and then what sucks is like you can't move. Like if you move too much one way. I feel like I should be terrified. You're not? But I'm not. I don't know what I feel. How are you not scared? <laughs> I mean, I like rain. I like listening to storms, but this would be terrible. You like them when you're home? I'll tell you what, if it's raining outside, you crack a window and take a nap, that's like perfection. But I'm not talking like a storm like that. I'm talking like just a light rain. Well, now what? Or at work, but not in the car. Yeah, having to drive in thunderstorms, that's the worst. I agree with that. I'd rather be home or at work, not on the road. Have you ever seen anything like that? Well, I have seen storms. There are never two quite the same. I've never been anywhere near a storm like that. We're still here. Christ, now the sun's coming up. Thus lifts the veil of night. I can't believe we've been here the entire night. How can that many things happen? Honestly, I don't even feel like the same person. I came out here so worried about what I'm supposed to do. But it all seems so inconsequential now. It's all so pointless. Which is actually a relief. 
The waves will keep on crashing after I'm gone. The grass will still be blowing. Even if I never came back. If I never came here in the first place. That consistency is so grounding. Like, it doesn't matter what I do in the future. It really doesn't make a difference. Yes, the ocean is beautiful. Maybe I'll be buried in it tomorrow, but it's pretty okay now. It's nice to just have that, right now. I know this cliff will still be here, even if I left. Just being here, away from everything else. Even remembering that it's here. It's like soaking up a sponge with the horizon and the clouds and everything. And then just taking it away. Hmm. Leaving. It's like our perspective is taking a dramatic shift here. Knowing that it all carries on. going don't leave I'm still stuck here Why do you leave? It's just us, Carlos. That's the car. For anyone that doesn't know. Want to give it another shot? Did we fall off or did we back up? There's only one set of tracks. Oh shit, you're right. No, zombie's right. There's only one set of tracks. We totally fell off. That's why the deer left. If we fell off, that's why the deer left. Because it seemed like our character had... accepted... like, their own mortality, instead of... freaking out about it. Wasn't that from skidding? Yeah, those tracks were there... Um, from the start. 
because we slid to the cliff. So I guess the stag left because it realized, like, we had accepted things. That's my initial impression right now. I don't know. So the deer was death. I don't know if the deer was death. There's different endings. Interesting. I did say earlier, I wonder... I wonder if your choices make a difference. They're all ambiguous. Interesting. I mean, I don't see a second pair of tracks. So it seems to me like we we fell off. But at the same time, it is ambiguous because we never heard anything. We never heard the car back up. We never heard the car crash and splash at the bottom. I don't know. Maybe it's open to interpretation. That was really interesting. I like how it's kind of ambiguous about the stag, too. Like, you don't really know what his deal is. Um, there we go. An ambiguous ending. Even though I think we fell off. <laughs> Which really sucks. That would be such a shit way to die. Anyway, there you have it. That was far from noise. Um, I am curious what the other endings are, but I feel like the experience that I had playing through it this way. Like, I don't want to taint that. I don't really want to know what the other endings are. Um, what did you guys think? I thought it was neat. I, I liked our protagonist. I thought the sarcasm and the emphasis on thir certain things was uh, very, very amusing. And I liked the stag, even though he was kind of like... Uh, what would be the word? God, I don't even know what word to describe him, but he just kind of had like an air about him where he's like You think the badger guy? <laughs> yep That settles it. That was what happened in the end. We started the car and the badger came back 100%